you see here the armamentarium for finishing and polishing of the three-unit bridge. Also, we have laid out some items that you may not have in your kit, but that may be very helpful later on during particularly your clinical years. Some separating discs and rough stones for gross contouring. Again, the full assembly of sandpaper discs. A metal wire brush wheel for uh, removal of any, any skin from, in particular, the occlusal surface. The thinned out white flexi, which has been used before. A commercially fabricated uh, rubber wheel of a slightly finer grit with the same type of curved configuration. Some polishing brushes and a cloth wheel to obtain the high luster. These will be used in conjunction with polishing compounds, which we'll show you later. Some thin mylar strip in two colors, one for the centric contacts and one for evaluation of the excursions. A metal thickness gauge, if any extensive adjustment is necessary, it's helpful to know how much thickness of metal you have to work with. And some small assorted round burrs to touch up any anatomical detail that is desirable. First, the separating disc is used to remove the dimple that was used to locate the ponic from the buccal surface and to reestablish normal contour. Similarly, it is used to remove any excess material that remains of the screw from the lingual of the ponic. And you may wish to try to save this gold scrap to turn it back in for a refund. Once normal contour has been reestablished, you're ready to proceed with the next abrasive, the sandpaper disc. The sandpaper disc is a single side cutting disc and it is used to blend the adjusted area in with the previously rubber wheeled area. You may have to replace this disc a few times depending on the amount of adjusting that needs to be done. And note now that dimples are still present. This is not yet an acceptable finish. You are simply not ready to proceed with the rubber wheel. Remember, polishing is nothing other than sequential abrasion. Allow each abrasive to do its job for you and use it until it no longer has any visible effect. Not until then are you truly ready to proceed with the next step. If as here the disc is folding over, you, over, it is at the end of its useful life and it should be replaced with a fresh disc. and the process can continue. In this case also in the lingual aspect, of course, where additional adjusting is necessary in the area adjusted where the sprue was attached. The cervical shape of the connector should be as convex as is possible. As was shown earlier in the cross section during the waxing phase. If it is somewhat flattened off, like between the ponic and the, the molar, a disc may be in order to give it the convex configuration to facilitate maintenance and cleaning by the patient.
The same shape is given to the mesial connector. And at this time, we're ready to proceed with the rubber wheel. Note that only small scratch marks are visible and that the entire surface is nicely convex and contoured and free of facets. Again, the rubber wheel is trued on a suitable stone and then it is used on the side to smoothen and blend all actual surfaces together and to finish the adjusted areas. Remember that it is not necessary to spend much time rubber wheeling the remaining portion of the casting because this was already done prior to the soldering procedure. Of course, at all times care must be taken not to damage the margins and it may not be a bad idea to protect them with a finger during this process. The most difficult area will be in the interproximal where access is most difficult. This is the type of rubber wheel finish you should obtain. Note how nicely the concave contour of the rubber wheel fits into the interproximal area. It's a good idea to have the crown positioned on the die to give you an other way of holding and manipulating the bridge. Again, the thin edge is used to rubber wheel the connectors, but care must be taken not to damage the exposed margin in this process. The actual walls were used with the thinned out rubber wheel under relatively high pressure and somewhat slow speed. We have not finished the margin yet, and the original skin is still present. Change the position of the rubber wheel at this time, and at very slow speed, remove the last bit of skin, rubber wheel right to the margin, and pull back. Try not to spend too much time doing this since otherwise an under contour restoration will result. This time you're ready for polishing of the actual surface. The difficulty presents in the interproximal area where access is much more difficult to accomplish. Use of a push-pulling type motion combined with additional thinning of the center portion of the disc will give you adequate access. Once the disc has been thinned, to fit better into the embrasure, again at very slow speed, the last bit of finishing in the interproximal area can be obtained. Similarly, from the other side, making sure that the wheel runs from gold to die rather than vice versa, the last little bit of finishing is performed.
if your wax pattern was properly smooth, this step should not take that much time. A rough wax pattern will make it much more difficult to perform the polishing phase. Remember, it is more difficult in metal than it was in wax. Once all axial walls have been rubber wheeled and an acceptable finish has been obtained, our attention shifts to the occlusal table. Using a small piece of mylar strip, the contacts are marked and any high spots are adjusted. The bridge should be adjusted until mylar ribbon will hold on all teeth circumferentially. Here clearly a high spot is present in this general area. When we look at the markings we see that our casting procedure and our overall laboratory fabrication has resulted in a couple of high spots. These can be adjusted with small round burrs, green stones, or white stones, depending on the amount of gold that needs to be removed. As each adjustment is made, make sure to immediately smoothen the area that is being adjusted and to blend it back in with the other anatomical features before proceeding with your next marking. Your Miller's forceps will help you hold the tape parallel to the length of the arch. And the adjustment process continues until your ribbon holds on each of the teeth. S heavy contacts are typically visible as an annulus shaped mark with a color on the outside and a, a gold colored center. Such marks are lightened up and you may wish to use a small round burr or a very fine cutting white stone for this final adjustment. Similarly in this area the heavier marks are slightly relieved before proceeding with the next step. The next step in occlusal finishing would be once again the use of a wire brush wheel. The bridge is removed from the master cast. And the wire brush wheel is used to obtain a preliminary finish. High speed and relatively light pressure are the key in obtaining this luster. Okay. A small round burr is used to accentuate any fissures and grooves that may require additional refining prior for the last step being the obtaining of the high luster with Tripoli and Rouge.
Any irregularities must be removed now since the Tripoli nor the Rouge have really very much of a cutting action. They merely will increase the luster on the completed prosthesis. The key to polishing with Tripoli and Rouge is not to use too much time. 10% of your time should be spent using these final polishing agents. In the rubber wheel phase, you use low speed and high pressure. With Tripoli and Rouge, you'll use high speed and extremely light pressure, keeping the brush in constant motion. Do not hold it at one point since excessive abrasion may result. Allow the speed and the motion to work for you to obtain the final luster. Right to the margin and back. Carefully go around the entire casting until you have obtained a reasonable finish. Similarly, do not over polish the occlusal surfaces since you do not wish to destroy the occlusal contacts that have taken so much effort to create. After the entire bridge has been carried through the Tripoli stage and exhibits a continuous luster, you're ready to proceed with the rouge. After the Tripoli phase, the casting is placed in Tripoli and Rouge remover in an ultrasonic and cleaned before proceeding with the final polishing stage with Rouge. A new brush is used for Rouge. You really should use separate brushes and again, extremely high speed with very light pressure will give you the final surface finish to be given to the restoration. Be careful during this entire process that no margin is damaged and use the dies as a handhold. If you wish, you may also use the rouge on the clusal surface, but once again, only use it for very short periods of time since you do not want to damage your occlusal scheme and you wish to maintain the contacts established earlier. This time we're ready to clean the bridge once again and place it in our patient's mouth or in this instance the deniform. A rag wheel can be used to remove any excess rouge as a final step. Care again must be taken not to over polish the margins and to truly obtain the most optimal and continuous luster. At this time, the bridge is ready for trying. The completed bridge after cleaning is again positioned on the deniform and inspected for marginal integrity. Note that the point contact has been reestablished at the crest of the ridge. Note the ease of cleansability and maintenance by the patient because of the large and properly shaped embrasure areas. And note that occlusal contact has been reestablished. You can use two colors of ribbon, red and black, to verify the absence of excursive interferences and the presence of centric stops.
and the excursions, no contact, and lateral movements should be present on the bridge. Verify that your bridge has met all the biological, mechanical, and aesthetic criteria as were set forth during the lectures.